All right, I'm going to go over problem 39 of the multiple choice section of the 2016 practice exam. And here we have a simulation that was conducted using 10 fair six sided dice, which so is regular dice, the dice you guys normally you know, play Monopoly or whatever with. And all 10 dice were rolled, and the average of the 10 dice, uh, average of the 10 dice, the numbers appearing face up was recorded. And they did this 20 times. So they rolled 10 dice 20 times. Which of these best describes the, distrib the distribution being simulated? All right, so this was a really tough problem. I, it was actually, I, when I, I looked at the results, and um, it was actually the lowest scoring problem from the multiple choice section. Only 20% of students got it right, which is basically the same as just guessing. So I'm going to try to go over it slowly and really carefully and make sure you guys really get it. So um, with a sampling distribution, you're going to have the um, number of individuals in each trial be, be n. So not the number of trials, but the number of individuals, or in this case, the number of dice in each trial. So n will be 10. So right away, we can eliminate C and E. And then we're going to then find the mean of all of those, well, of, of those 10 dice in each of those trials. And if you remember from this unit, it's on, the mean is an unbiased estimator. So um, this mean is also going to be equal to the population mean. but what this means is, <laughs> what this is representing is the mean of the sampling distribution of X bar. So all we have to do is take the average of 10 dice. And basically that's going to be the same as if you roll it 20 times, 50 times, 100 times, it doesn't matter. So we have, tw so we have 10 dice. We have, you know, numbers one through six on each one. And on a dice, each each um each number has the same chance of rolling. So we it's gonna be one in six chance to roll a one, a one in six chance to roll a two, a one in six chance to roll a three, and so forth. All the way up to six. You're gonna get those numbers to add up to 21 divided by six. And you're gonna get to be 3.5. This is the same equation as um, the expected value. So let me just pop to the equation sheet. So it's what this would mean. The sum of xi times pi. So you may see it like this on your formula sheet. The XIs are like the one, two, three, four, five, and six, and the PIs are the one, six. Now, the last thing we need to figure out is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of X bar. So from here, I think this isn't really limited. Is this real? Yeah, this eliminates, this. knowing that's 3.5 eliminates D. So now we're just down to A and B. So you got a 50 50 shot here. Now, um, what we do then is we take the equation for um, the variance. So let me pop, let me just show you on the formula sheet because I don't expect you to memorize this. So it's going to be this, the way you sum up the differences between each value. Oh, that's not the. the let me write it again. The differences between each value and the mean squared times their corresponding probabilities. So like, I'm sorry, this is the variance. It's the variance. So this would start off as like one minus 3.5 squared times one six plus Two minus three point five times one six 
all the way till you get to um six six minus three point five squared times one six. And what you're gonna get when you do this on your calculator, you're gonna get about one point seven one. Or no, you're gonna get two points. You're gonna two, but you're gonna get two point nine one six ish repeating. But remember now, this is the variance. So take the square root of this because the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So you're gonna have the square root of two point nine one six which will give you, that'll give you about 1.71. Now here's the thing, it's not gonna be B because we're not done yet. Um, this is probably, I'm not sure if this was where most of the mistakes were made, but this is the part I had to double check because I was thinking about this, but like, what we're gonna do then is divided by the sample size or by the square root of the sample size. So we take this 1.71 divided by the square root of 10. And from there, you'll get about 0.54. So your answer is A. Yeah, so that is a tough one. I'll, you know, I can definitely see how that was a very commonly missed problem. Um, so yeah, um, just again, know what you're good at, and um, as I always say, just practice. Do practice problems. Do practice problems. Um, but probability is the most common. It's always the lowest. Has been always the lowest scoring section on the exam. So don't feel bad if you like you find that the, to be the hardest. And coincidentally, the last problem is also a probability question. It's not going to be as tedious or it's not going to, it's really going to involve you understand this, this main concept. So here we have the SC Electric Company has a bid on two electrical wiring jobs. The owner of the company believes that the probability of being awarded the first job, which is event A is 0.75. The probability of being awarded the second job, event B is 0.5. And the probability of being awarded both jobs, A and B, is 0.375. If the owner's beliefs are correct, which of the following statements must be true concerning event A and event B? Okay, so um, here we have them. Here the answers are talking about being mutually exclusive and, and independent. So first, let's know what mutually exclusive means. That's simply that if events are mutually exclusive, they cannot both occur together. They both can't happen. Like you both, you can't like, if you play sports, you can't win the basketball game and lose the basketball game. Like those two things are not gonna occur together. Um, if you pick, you know, if you flip a coin, you're not, you can't go get heads. You can't both get heads and tails, um, that sort of thing. So um, now the other thing, about now independence is essentially that the probability of one occurring is not going to affect the probability of the other occurring. So um first off we know it's not we, we first off we know that you, they can get both jobs so it's going to they're not mutually exclusive so it's not going to be a or b because because both a and b can occur. Now the way you can check independence is that if you remember this formula, the probability of like the probability of two events occurring together, given that their probabilities are not going to be affected by one another, is just the multiplication rule. More specifically, they'll say the multiplication rule for independent events. So if you want to see what's the probability of, uh, like for example, you wrote you're flipping a coin, um, what's the probability of getting on a heads on the first? Let's say what's the probability of getting a a heads and a heads and a, again a heads um let's say three times in a row you should know that this is just going to be 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5 which is going to be 0.125 the reason you can just multiply them is because it doesn't matter 
if you got a head on the first toss, the head the gain of heads on the second toss is not affected by that. Neither is gain of heads on the third toss. So it's always 0.5 because it's not um, each each head is not dependent on gain of heads on another toss. So here you can see that you can get events A and B by simply multiplying it by simply multiplying them together. Because if you do 0.75 times 0 0.5, you're going to get 0.375. That means that they're um, going to be independent because it doesn't matter that event A occurred, event B is still 0.5. And they tell you what the, what the, um, what the probability is. If they were not independent, then the 0.5 could be something else if event A occurred. So that's really what it's really the best way I would think about it and the simplest way. So then they are independent and they're not mutually exclusive. And the answer would be C. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments section. And if you, if you think this is helpful um, or, or, you know, um, think, think these videos, if these videos are helping you, then um, please give me a like and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video.